1997 Finals, Malone's Jazz, and Jordan's Bulls. 1998 Finals, Malone's Jazz, and Jordan's Bulls. In the course of these games, Jordan would get food poisoning from allegedly 10 pizza men, Jordan would play the most well-paced basketball game of all time, and Jordan would cap off his career with not one, but two three-peats. And still, everyone's only talking about Dennis Rodman's pro wrestling career against Karl Malone. Well, not really. Welcome to Takes in Fuego. Today we are going to look at the tales of Rodzilla and Karl Malone in purple leather pants. On the court, there would be a hell of a battle at some points, but there is no doubt who really came out victorious in these battles. Here's a graphic of their statistical matchup throughout the playoffs. Although Rodman did out-rebound him per 36 minutes and almost certainly was annoying at times, Karl Malone was Karl Malone. His nearly 26 points per game on Rodman didn't lie. After Game 3 of the Finals, where the Bulls set the Finals record for a 42-point victory against the Jazz, Karl Malone and the Utah Jazz must have felt to be at an all-time low. It's at this point in the last dance where Dennis Rodman skips practice for a WWE match with Hulk Hogan. This must have been turning Phil Jackson's hair white. He wasn't much of a wrestling fan, but for the better of the team, he let it go. Bob Costas remembers the situation, Phil Jackson played it exactly right. He had everyone, including Jordan and Pippen, on board. And the message was, look, if this happened in the regular season, maybe we suspend him. But we need this guy to win a championship, so we're going to express our disapproval mildly, but we're not going to put our championship chances in jeopardy. It was the right approach. The NBA would fine Rodman $10,000 for missing practice and a mandatory media event but he would earn $1.5 million for this fight. He would need it too. He was sued by four different people for at least $14.1 million total in 1998 for grabbing bald heads and shoving $100 bills between the cocktail waitresses, allegedly. Unknown if any of these lawsuits were won. But what the producers of The Last Dance forgot to put in is that Carl Malone got involved with the WCW, World Championship Wrestling. Malone and Diamond Dallas Page had a friendship prior to the fight. Once they learned Dennis Rodzilla Rodman was interested, it was a clear match made in heaven. The fight became scheduled after the season. Diamond Dallas Page and Malone will take on Rodzilla and Hulk Hogan in the New World Order at Bash of the Beach. Both fit the type in their own way. Malone was a slab of muscle. At 6 foot 9, 250 pounds, he looked like Black Zeus. Before he became a star in the NBA, Malone actually wanted to be a WWE star. And Rodzilla fit in wrestling due to his... Oh come on, that guy is a real life WWE character. As wrestling fans know, setting up a fight for a big pay per view event can take months to build the drama on their normal TV viewing. They did not have that luxury in this case. So the WCW president remembers talking to Rodman. I got a hold of Dennis through his manager at the time, Dwight Manley. I said, look, nothing during the game. I don't want to be accused of screwing up the game, be it the playoffs. But if there's any chance when you guys are kind of in between, or if you're off the court, you know, near the court, there's cameras running. If you guys could like push and shove each other a little bit, you know, kind of raise the heat, raise the temperature just a bit. I wouldn't be disappointed if something like that were to happen. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just telling you if something were to happen like that, I'd be pretty happy about it. I don't know about you guys, but to me, it sounds like he's telling Rodman to do it. This might explain why it took Rodman and Malone four attempts to actually get up after they were battling for a loose ball. The announcers didn't seem to be wrestling fans. They would say, They're scheduled to wrestle in one of those bogus events next month. Why Malone wants to blow himself to that is anyone's guess. Flash forward to the moment we have all been waiting for. Carl Malone walks out with no shirt and shiny purple leather pants. Dennis Rodman walks out with NWO boots and hat along with his Rodzilla shirt alongside NWO friend Hulk Hogan. The match wasn't great, according to wrestling aficionados. The match lasted about 25 minutes, which is a lot for two guys with little to no wrestling experience. Malone did get a few slams in though. Hulk Hogan would say he had never been tossed around by anyone as he'd been by Carl Malone. After some outside help from Brutus the Barber Beefcake, Rodman and Hogan ended up beating Malone and Diamond Dallas Page. Malone did Diamond Dallas Page's finishing move, the Diamond Cutter, on Brutus the Barber Beefcake, then he allegedly thought he won the match. When it turns out he didn't, he did another Diamond Cutter on the referee. 
Carl Malone was never one to seek the most attention. He had been leading the Jazz as quiet contenders for most of his career. For tonight, all eyes were on him and he got to live the childhood dream. For one match at least. Malone was one and done. Rodman will return to the ring with Macho Man Randy Savage. This won't be the last time an NBA personality crossed over. Despite the not so great match, it brought a ton of media attention and cash to the WCW and made for one of the strangest NBA duels on record. For more duels, including when Clyde Drexler dueled it out with Michael Jordan, check out the videos on the screen and be sure to subscribe or I will petition for Dennis Rodman to wrestle you.